The DJI Mini 3 Pro is one year old. It gives creators 4K HDR video, hyperlapse, quick shots, vertical video, stunning photos, and can even be used with DJI Integra goggles in a drone that fits in your pocket. It's simply great, but not perfect. It has some drawbacks and limitations. After a year of flying the DJI Mini 3 Pro, let's talk about my one year review. So the DJI Mini 3 Pro is a year old and I've been absolutely loving flying this all around the world in different locations. It is fantastic. But like I mentioned, it does have some drawbacks and limitations and that's gonna put quite a few of you off. So if you've not already got the DJI Mini 3 Pro, this video should hopefully help in a one year review on this about the good points and the bad points about whether you should still go out and buy this drone. So before we get into it, make sure you like and subscribe. We've got loads more content coming really soon. So if you enjoy drone and tech content, just hit that subscribe button and I'm gonna get into my overall feelings on this. But let's talk about the good points first. So obviously one of the main advantages to this drone is its size. Just look at it in comparison to the Mavic 3 or even an iPhone 14 Pro Max. This is tiny and one of its biggest advantages having a drone like this is the ability to take this more places without any effort whatsoever. Which means if you're gonna be going traveling for example, like I do a lot, the Mini 3 Pro can be always with me because it's just not gonna take up a lot of space in my camera bag. I could even put this in my pocket if I wanted to, which means I'm gonna have more opportunities of flying this more often than say the Mavic 3 Pro, which is better in every single way than the Mini 3 Pro. However, because this is much bigger, I'm gonna think about taking it more. Should I take this? What is this gonna take up in my camera bag? And it means I'm not gonna be able to take something else. Whereas this, because it's so small and lightweight, I can put this in the smallest of bags, just take this out for the day, and I've always got a drone with me to get aerial content. So the Mini 3 Pro is perfect also for beginners because you're going to get more experience on this. You're gonna take this more places, you're gonna be flying this more often, so more practice makes perfect. If you go out and buy a Mavic 3, you're not gonna be flying this as often because it's a little bit more of a hassle to take around with you. And if you're a beginner, you have no idea what you're doing, just by buying a Mavic 3 or a Mavic 3 Pro, it's not going to make you great overnight. It's not about the gear, it's about the experience and your skills and knowledge. You can practice all of this on a DJI Mini 3 Pro. So you learn about lighting, the angles, different drone moves, different techniques, being good on the controller sticks. This is what it takes. And then you can move up to say the Mavic 3 Pro once you've got that experience. Now, if you have been following this channel, you know I've been going through all the specs on this drone of this last year, so I'm not gonna go through all of them. I'm just gonna focus on the key things that I've been really enjoying over this last year. But one of them is because it's so small, it has these really tiny tiddly propellers on here. Now, this is a downside and also a good thing as well. The good side of it is, is that it is really quiet. So I would say this is the quietest drone that I've ever flown. It doesn't have any extra propellers on this. This is just a standard DJI propellers, which means you're not going to have loads of attention on you. So if you were to take this to a beach or a tourist location, you're not gonna have everyone turning around going, oh my God, it's a drone over there, there's a drone pilot. You know, you can be more discreet because you're not going to stand out. There's not going to be this huge spotlight on you like you would if you have, say, a Mavic 3, which is much louder, or even the DJI Varta and screaming at everybody. This is a lot more discreet, and especially again for beginners, or if you don't want to stand out, that's a huge advantage. And going back to the travel scenario, because this is so small, it means it is so popular with the travel community. All you have to do is type in travel content on say YouTube or Instagram. A majority of people who like drones or have a drone as their backup, maybe they're a photographer, they have one drone that's always obvious, and that is the Mini 3 Pro. It's because it's going to deliver good quality content, but because it is so small you can fit this in a camera bag but also let's think about the weight as well you have weight allowances when you're traveling this weighs under 250 grams and everything in the kit is also following that same theme which i think is fantastic so the batteries are absolutely tiny and lightweight they weigh nothing and even the charging case which you need to pick up because you don't just want one battery that will ruin your life the charging case just literally weighs nothing. This is fantastic. So you can put all three of these batteries inside this charging case. It also acts as a power bank. So when you're out and about, if you have a low foam battery, you can just charge this, but it also going to charge each one of these batteries in sequence. But this is super lightweight. And then the controller. So one thing to take away from this, if you go and buy the Mini 3 Pro, just spend a little bit more and get the DJI RC controller with the built-in screen. It will change your life. 
So with this, it's got a built-in screen, 700 nits of peak brightness, and it's better because you don't have to connect your phone to it. So you don't have to be there fiddling around with the wires, connecting your phone. As soon as you connect it, you're gonna get phone calls off your mom asking how the holiday's going, all these distractions coming in, text messages, it's just a nightmare. And then also if your phone battery is low, you're kind of screwed. Whereas this, it's all in one. And the theme, again, this is super lightweight. I literally have no idea how this is so lightweight. And this is also the golden ticket number. This is under 250 grams. So it means you don't have to do complex drone licenses to be able to fly this. Majority of countries around the world, all you're gonna to have to do is register yourself and register the drone and that is it. So I've taken this to several countries, Europe, America, Turkey, no problem whatsoever with this drone taking it to those countries. Also some countries, it seems to be that 500 grams or more is like that, eh -eh, no chance. And you're not allowed either into that country with the drone or you've got to get permission, which is an absolute pain in the ass and it's really difficult to get. So this for travel is perfecto. So the Mini 3 Pro is really plasticky. It's because it's got a ton of features built into this, but it's still under 250 grams. And I've crashed this into a tree and had to throw a rock at this and it withstood it and it's still going strong now. So that's good. So it is deceiving that yes, it is plasticky, but it is re relatively durable. The Mini 3 currently is about 300 pounds less. It's basically like a dumbed down, stripped down version of the Mini 3 Pro. It doesn't have a lot of the features, but it is good if you just want literally a drone that's gonna give you 4K quality and can shoot in vertical, get this. But I would personally just save up more, sell something, sell everything in the house, just, just put everything on eBay and then go and get the money and buy this. That's what I would do. Now soon it's going to take a bit of a downward spiral this drone because it has some issues that I've faced over these last 12 months for sure. But let's just talk about a couple more good things about this. Firstly, this has obstacle avoidance. Now this is a good and a bad side. The obstacle avoidance is going to save your ass 100%. Because if you've never flown a drone before, you don't have a clue what you're doing, you just set off in your mum's garden, you're gonna crash this into a fence straight away. But because it's got obstacle avoidance sensors on the front, the back, and at the bottom, it's going to see this fence and it's gonna be like, what the hell are you doing? And it's gonna either break or go around the fence and carry on. So having obstacle avoidance on here is a big deal. And the camera, considering that sensor is so small, it does produce really good photos and videos. So it can shoot 4K 60, it can shoot 120 in HD, but I just shoot majority of the time in 4K 25 or 4K 30, and that quality is really nice. It has a downside to it that this is an f1.7 fixed aperture. So your low light and nighttime videos are gonna look fantastic because it's an f1.7, but in the daytime, that's not very good. It means that shutter speed is going to be super high to compensate for that. So unlike the Mavic 3 Pro, that has an adjustable aperture. So normally during the daytime, I'm like f5.6 or higher during daytime. On here, because it's an f1.7 fixed, you're screwed. So literally all the time I have an ND filter on this drone. I don't go anywhere without an ND filter unless it's at night, but I have to have an ND filter on here and you do too. So aside from the fly more kit, which I said to go out and get, you need an ND filter on. I use the Freewell ones, I'll put them in the link down below, but I would 100% recommend them. Aside from that, the camera is fantastic. I mean, just look at the videos I've been putting on the screen. This is all taken on the Mini 3 Pro and it doesn't take much color grading at all. I'll get onto that. But yeah, the camera on here has some drawbacks being an F1.7, but that also brings so many positives as well. Really good. I really like Focus Track on here. Active Track's fantastic. Just drag a box around whatever you're in, so a car, and it will track you without you having to do anything. And it's also got Spotlight, which I really do like. You can just drag a box around, say, a building, which works best on, and then you have more control, so you can actually fly the drone, but the drone will keep the actual subject centered all the time, so you can get these really good-looking shots. You'll be like, how have you done that? You've only been flying this drone a week, but really, it's Spotlight mode making you look good. But well, that's never a bad thing, is it? So, yeah, really good. Now, another controversial side of this, which I actually do like, is the vertical mode. Press a button on here, and it will actually now just rotate into vertical, so that gimbal moves. Now, this is fantastic for TikToks and Reels. Now, personally, I'm just using it for taking photos or short video clips, and then I can pull that onto social media like Instagram straight away. It has a whole host of different features, like master shots, hyperlapse, 
loads and they're all good they're all there they're all built into this but it gets better you can also use this and bring out your inner tom cruise because you can get now the dji integra goggles and they work with the dji mini 3 pro we've just seen this on the latest firmware update so you can get the integra goggles you can put these on all the goggles too and then you can actually pretend that you're flying in top gun by using the motion controller but really you fly the mini 3 pro so this is a feature we've wanted for ages it's a lot of fun and it's good that it's there so if you want to do that if you want to pretend to be Tom Cruise, now you can. Now it only has two color profiles, normal and D cine like Normal is going to be fine for majority of people who are just getting into this, who have no clue about color grading. D cine like is a 10 bit color profile, but it's this flat looking video. It's going to give you the very best quality. It's what I personally use all the time. I really do like D cine fantastic but you have to color grade it so i've got my own lots that i made specially for the mini 3 pro and these are either normal or decently like lots so what is a lot it's just going to change the overall effect how that looks so you might be going for like a really moody look you might want really saturated teal and orange loads of different choices that you can do so all you do you just click one of those lots drag it onto your video clip and there you go it's done so with decently like it's a bit of a pain trying to change all the highlights, the shadows, the contrast, learning how to color grade. Whereas these looks are just going to make your life easier. It's drag and drop. So these are a lot quicker. If you want to go check them out, they're on my website, dmprovisuals.com. So loads of people have already bought these already. It's what I would recommend as purchase number three. Okay, all that said, there are some issues with the Mini 3 Pro. So the Mini 3 Pro is tiny. That's a good thing and also a bad thing as well. It means the wind resistance on here isn't fantastic. It says it's got a level five wind resistance. I find anything over 20 miles per hour, you just game over. If you've got strong gusts of like 30 miles an hour, don't even bother. I have flown this in strong winds and it's been okay getting a bit of footage. But the trouble is because it's so small, it's fighting that wind a lot. The gimbal's getting blown around all over the place. So your footage isn't going to look great. Now I have lost quite a lot of opportunities at filming with the Mini 3 Pro because in some locations it's been just too windy. Whereas the Mavic 3 could take that drone out and it's just no issue whatsoever. So it depends, where do you live? Where do you want to buy this drone? Are you in a naturally windy place? If you are, I would say skip out on this and get the Mavic 3 just to save you a lot of headaches. It is a pain in the arse at times when you get to this location, it's fantastic and you can't fly your Mini 3 Pro because it's just too windy. So good and bad sides of the size of this. We can't go away from this. Even in Mini 4, Mini 5, Mini 19, it will still have the same issues with wind resistance because of its size. Now the sensors on here are fantastic, but it also gives you that false sense of security that your drone is invincible and it isn't. It doesn't have any side sensors on here at all. So if you're flying and it's on say a rotation like for active track or you're just flying sideways, and it won't stop into any object and it will crash. And this seems to be happening more and more often. So the sensors are great, but also something to be made aware about. So I've touched on about the F1.7 being fixed in harsh daylight conditions. You're going to need a strong ND filter on there. Otherwise your footage is going to be really, really sharp. Now the signal performance I've found to be fine. Some people have said the signal isn't very good. It doesn't have any external antennas on here, but in my locations I'm flying, I'm flying relatively close to me and getting the shots. I'm not doing drug runs to a prison 18 miles away or flying into a different town. I'm not bothered about any of that and neither should you be just concentrate on getting the content in the area that you're in so the signal on here has been more than good enough one thing you also need to be aware of is because of its size it also has a lack of power as well so if you're going to be flying in that windy conditions again just be sure you can get your drone back to you if you're flying into this other town to deliver drugs to that prison and it's really windy then this might struggle to get back to you because it's just not strong enough to get through them winds so i hope you don't make that mistake so in conclusion, that is it. Those are the downsides to this drone. It brings so many advantages. So I would highly recommend this. It's never been a better time now than to buy a drone. So you have all these options. You have Mini 3, you have Mini 3 Pro, you have an Air 2S, which I wouldn't recommend right now. You have a Mavic 3, a Mavic 3 Pro. You have literally so many different drones. So whilst this doesn't have the power or the performance or the quality of a Mavic 3 Pro, it also brings a lot of advantages as well. This and a Mavic 3 Pro is a fantastic 
fantastic combination to get. But let me know if you have this drone, just feedback in the comments, your experience on this, any good sides, bad sides. And it would be also interesting to read, but also help out any new potential buyers where they should go and get this. I personally highly recommend this. I'm gonna link it in the description down below. I'm also gonna put the description for those color grading LUTs to make your life easier. And I've also got cheat sheets, which go through all of the settings, the key settings, performance settings, how to get the very best out of this drone. They're available all on my website as well. So I really hope you enjoyed this. 12 months, but it's not over. This carries on. So I really hope you enjoyed that, guys. Let me know in the comments down below if you did. I've got a lot of exciting content coming really soon and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.